Hello, I'm the Resolute Cartographer, and this is the 63rd video of my Fallout 76 Surveil series, covering the Rusty Pick, right here, right at the edge of the ash heap in the forest just south of Charleston. So, I'm going to cover this place because it's very likely to change in the near future. So we got the nice Rusty Pick sign right there. We got the uh, Hornwright Rock Hound up there in the, on top of the mountain. Okay, so this area was uh, occupied by uh, super mutants. Just killed them before you, I started filming. Then we got this uh, poster here for the Man vs. Machine contest. This was a minor bar. They would have been very interested in this event. Now, again, as I talked about in my uh, video on Bromwell, there is a very serious discrepancy in terms of when this thing actually happened. But if you're interested in that, you should watch my video on Bromwell. So we got a U-Mine at Vending Machine here. Dumpster there. We got a Comrade Chubbs here sitting out by the grill. And uh, we're just going to cover this real quick and then we're going to go back around the other side. So we got this Nuka Cola sign and a uh, fence. So we'll head back around this side. So it looks like, uh, apart from this entrance, which you can still go into, this area here has been also fortified for some reason around this entrance. Now, I don't really know why they would only fortify one entrance, but whatever. This area clearly was controlled by raiders at, one, at some point, uh, just from the uh, spike pole decorations, the <laughs> dismembered heads there. Uh, we got this whole bandstand sort of thing going on right here. Uh, but the other thing that tells me that this was a raider location is this vehicle right here, which it appears that they were using to kill people. This is one of those things where I really wish at some point we would actually see vehicles working in Fallout. Um, hopefully Fallout 5, maybe they'll change the engine and we'll see some actual use of cars. Now coming around in here, we got uh, just some general junk in here. Got a uh, toolbox right there. And along with that we have a dead super mutant that I killed a minute ago. And a uh, clown hat, for whatever reason. So we'll come around this side, we got the, a water tower here. Got uh, some cars here. Well, there's one there, and there's two back over there. I didn't really mention, so that's why I said cars. We got an old fridge here. A dead soldier with a shotgun and some shotgun shells. I'm going to go through this gate here. Although it's <laughs> kind of dumb to have that gate there with this being completely wide open. But then we have an old phone booth here. And then uh, if we go around here, we got an old truck. We got the fence. Coming around this side. Then if we come back over here, there's a old motorcycle there. Got a uh, radio here, ashtray, plate, and a knife. Coming around the back side, we got a truck. You unfortunately cannot get into the, uh, into the trailer on this truck. Coming around here a little bit further, we got more dead super mutants. A uh, water pump. Interesting that that's there. An ash rose. Now if we come back up here, we can go up these stairs to the roof. And that's where we find uh, some ammo cases. Then another dead super mutant. Coming around up here, we got a whole bunch of AC venting. A uh, duffel bag with some ammunition, volatile materials box, that's nuclear material right there. And a recipe here, I already know that one. Got a uh, wood pile and a cooking setup. Then along with that, a sleeping bag and a corpse, the strange thing. Well, a skeleton, I should say. The strange thing about this is that the blood looks fresh, but uh, he's clearly been dead for some time. Let's see. Okay, so that really does it for the outside, so let's head inside. And we'll use this uh, fortified entrance. Alright, and you can hear the flies buzzing on some things I killed in here. Those that did rad roach in there, there were super mutants in here as well. So, right in here, we just came in again, the fortified entrance. Right here we got some uh, explosive crate and a ammo box. So let's turn the, flat, the flashlight on. Okay, so some tables with uh, salt and pepper back there, beer bottle. Uh, actually, is that just, yeah, that's actual beer, not just a beer bottle. Coffee pot and a mug. And uh, some cigarettes and a lighter. Now, there is also some uh, glowing fungus growing in here. More here, billiards table with pool cues, uh, pool balls. Now we've got an ashtray there. There's a holotape there. We'll come around to that here in just a minute. New stand, a uh, jukebox, and a porta diner. Let's see. Nope. Wrong button. Nope. Okay. So let's see. Let's come around here. We got the cash register, a tool case. Okay. Some interesting little bits of loot in here. And then we have one of my favorite hats in the game, the beer hat. Uh, coming around here, we got a broom. 
some pepper. No, that's a, actually a can back there. Uh, some iguana soup, a uh, fan, a uh, first aid kit with some purified water. This right here is that entrance that was not fortified. Keep pulling my gun out accidentally. We got a uh, cigarette machine right there. Coming back around here, one of the bathrooms. We got uh, a meat pile from a super mutant I killed. Some urinals, so I'm assuming this is the men's bathroom. We got a skeleton on the toilet. Going around to the women's bathroom. Brad Roach that I killed right there. We got some stalls. With some Radaway sitting here on the toilet tank. So we can head back out here again, taking a full look at the bar. All right. And let's listen to this holotape. Join the Auto Miners Support Squad. Looking for a new career? Like working with your hands? Finding solutions to challenging problems? Fixing complex machinery in exciting environments? Then it's time you join the Hornwright Industrial Auto Miners Support Squads. We're looking for talented men and gals interested in earning good pay for hard work keeping Hornwright Industrial's fleet of advanced auto mining robots active and kicking. Pop by the Hornwright recruitment booth in downtown Charleston and sign up today. Oh, I mean that is ballsy to, to bring one of those things here. When you consider that so many of the miners that were coming in here that were losing their jobs to auto miners to suddenly suggest to them, hey... You know, you're not a miner anymore, right? Well, you could repair the machines that just replaced you. Yeah, okay, so let's head back over here. We can go through this door, down the stairs, into the basement. We got a uh, fuel tank right there. A brewing station right there. Some 10 millimeter rounds, a wrap cap, and a um, miner's uniform there. Blackwater brew on the ground and a safe. There was a uh, pipe revolver here that went off when I came in to clear out the super mutants earlier, and I think... I think it went off. There must be something, because I uh, I feel like it triggered right when I got right around here, so I don't think it's actually attached to the safe. But, uh, anyway, let's check out what's in here. Alright, Stealth Boy Mark III. I've never seen that before. Okay, I actually kind of want to see what that is real quick. Invisible for 90 seconds. Versus, ah, Stealth Boy, which is invisible for 30 seconds. Okay. Well, let's take another look around here. We got uh, we got a note here. Clara Weber Diary. Clara Weber Diary. Old tavern with a secret meeting hall built into the old mine access. This was a local watering hole used by the miners after their shifts, run by an older woman whose husband and sons were killed in a mining accident. Passed down through her family, it sits on a forgotten mine access that was used as a speakeasy during Prohibition, which now serves as a secret meeting hall for the labor unions. All right. We also have a uh, pompadour wig right there. We'll get to this terminal here in just a second. Uh... Dog bowl on the desk there. Okay. Mick Flanagan's terminal. Alright. So we got uh, seven entries here. We'll start with entry one. The first layoffs hit horn right this week. Twelve men, all with families. Some of them worked at the company for ten years or more. No warning, no severance. It was all in the contract, you see. Hornwright reserves the right to terminate this agreement at any time without warning. It's kind of ironic how a bunch of stinking lawyers with pens could break the backs of miners with pickaxes. It happened so quickly it took time to figure out the cause. Turns out they started bringing in robots from that newfangled AMS company that built Latoga. That means something needs to be done before we all lose our jobs. Now the interesting thing here is there seems to be... Uh, I've been noticing that there's something of a conflict in terms of who created the auto miners. Because it says here, from that newfangled uh, uh, AMS company, but everything we find at AMS and everything we find at Hornwright says that they were made by Hornwright with help from Robco. So... Anyway, though, could just be a local on-the-ground confusion. So, entry number two. Finally had a chance to speak with O'Connor and Fletcher today. They've agreed to gather 20 miners each and meet back in the woods outside Charleston. It's time to meet and figure out how we're going to fight Hornwright, AMS, and anyone else that threatens our way of life. I'm sensing that a few of the miners don't want to join the cause, but we'll make them change their minds. It's all of us or none of us. There's nothing in between. Okay, entry number three. The plan set. O'Connor's group is heading to Watoga to protest AMS. Fletcher's group will head to Charleston to flip the finger at Hornwright, and my group is going to slow down the works at the Rock Hound on Mount Blair. We'll shout, we'll hold signs, and we'll swing a single pick until they're willing to talk to us. We got Sam Blackwell waiting in the wings to give us a hand if the companies are willing to talk. I'm gonna hope we can keep our people in line. I'm hearing some folks talk about going farther than just protesting. 
Entry number four. Two of the folks from my group got arrested last night for throwing rotten vegetables at Penny Hornwright's limo. Cops said some bullcrap about assault, but how can you hurt someone with a tomato? We tried to put in a call to Sam Blackwell since he knows the legal mumbo jumbo, but he suddenly isn't answering any of our calls. When I finally got through to his secretary, she said she hasn't seen him in days. I hope this isn't a trick that AMS or Hornwright cooked up to weaken our side. Sam Blackwell, of course, had gone into hiding. Entry number five. Fletcher's entire group was arrested last night for trespassing on Hornwright's property and he got canned. Somehow the property line for the mine mysteriously moved 100 feet outwards overnight. And the miners didn't know they were standing on private land. That son of a bitch CEO Daniel Hornwright waited until Blackwell skipped out on us to pull this stunt. So he likes to play dirty? Fine, we'll play dirty. Let's see how he likes it when we take shovels to his damn auto miners. Entry number six. Word came from Welsh that a bunch of veins of ultrasite peeked out their nasty mugs after a grind shaker two days ago. Last half my team when they ran home to start grabbing whatever they could. Not even 12 hours after the frenzy, AMS goon squads moved in ready to demolish homes to get at their property. People were none too pleased. That's when shooting broke out. I've called for another meeting with O'Connor's group. We need to act now, before AMS and Hornwright erases us off the map. And entry number seven. We decided to split into two groups again. I'm taking my group to capture the Rockhound on Mount Blair, and O'Connor will take his to Bromwell to blow their Mega Mansion sky high. Since Hornwright are such good friends with AMS, it's time to show them both we aren't the kind of folk that can be pushed around. After we're heard here, it'll be time to take the fight to Watoga and burn it to the ground. It's possible this will be my last entry, so if anyone reads this and I'm long buried, I hope they carry on the message and keep the fight alive. Okay. So, let's head over here. We got a security gate. We have a partially full set of reader power armor there. There's a tool chest. There was a rad roach that uh, suddenly popped its head out when I walked into that hallway out there. Uh, and then we have some shotgun shells right there. And we can come back here. This is the generator or transformer or whatever it is that's been making so much noise since we've been here. We can go through this, past the can chimes, down this uh, tunnel here. Oh, mole miners. All right, with the uh, mole miners and the mole rat taken care of, let's take a look around here. So we got some more glowing fungus there, a lantern, some brain fungus on the walls, some more brain fungus, some raider cages. Coming down in here, the tunnel to the right has been collapsed and we have a, a dead man lying on top of it. Heading down this way, we have a, another thing of hand chimes. Always nice to get those, nine pieces of lead combined with steel. Okay, so we've got this uh, large antechamber back here. And we have a uh, another mole miner there that I killed. And there's another one right here. I'll have to scrap some of that stuff. I just wanted the buzzing to stop. So we got a uh, explosive crate. Nothing special in there. We got the uh, steamer trunk here. All right. A uh, rat away. A couple more lanterns, some rat X, a knife and uh, some yum yum deviled eggs. And the uh, other interesting here, your orders arrived. Hello, Mech. I wanted to let you know I've procured those tools you and your boys were asking after. Along with all the nails and safety equipment you could need. But we don't do deliveries. Bring the money to my place in Welch. You know where to find the Duchess. All right, now we talked about her, this uh, holotape specifically uh, when I was talking about Duchess and the Wayward uh, in a previous video. So if uh, you were wondering specifically where that was, I mean, I kind of showed it then, but we're definitely showing it now. And maybe we'll be able to talk to, to uh, Duchess about that in the future. So anyway, though, that should do it for the Rusty Pick. This has been the Erased Loop Cartographer. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.